Good afternoon. Welcome to Third Grade Magic. I'm here today to read a story, The Raft. Miss McClellan was Ray! going to join Ray! me, but her... My cruise ship just got in! She was delayed, but apparently she docked. Ran... Are your feet bleeding? How long did you run? Just about 17 miles. Oh my gosh. I guess cruise ships are parking in South Wichita these days. All right, welcome to your third grade magic read aloud for this week. This week we are reading The Raft. The Raft. The Raft. The Raft. I do like, I miss, I see you third grader, Ethan. I do miss the phone because I do miss the filters. But I do like when we hold up pictures and words, you can actually read them. The Raft. The Raft. The Raft by Jim LaMarche. Pardon the interruption. Oh. We have a third grader. We have another third grader through. who probably broke through. You can cut through the studios right here, sir. Oh, you, you fit if you fit. Go ahead. Howdy, cowboy. Just a couple of city slickers here reading the story. The Raft by Jim LaMarche. It is realistic fiction. I smell a test question just there. That you smell the heavy test question oh. because we always ask the genre. So you know the raft is realistic fiction. It's a made up story, but it could happen in real life. And I think we should play a game. Let's start. Oh gosh. I can't be seen sneezing on the internet. I lost my sneeze. That makes me so sad. I think you should start the story. That way we're reading opposite pages that we did today with the children. What was that? There's nobody to play with, I complain. She doesn't even have a TV. Dad grinned. Well, she's not your normal kind of grandma, I guess, he said. Calls herself a river rat, <laughs> he chuckled. But chuckled. I can promise she'll find plenty for you to do. And you know I can't take you with me this summer, Nikki. There will be no kids there, and I'll be spending all my time at the plant. I felt tears starting again, but I blinked hard and looked out the window. Blinking back tears. That afternoon, I stood in Grandma's yard and watched my dad drive away. Dust rose up behind our car as it disappeared into the pines. Well, we can't stand here all summer, said Grandma. Come on, Nikki, it's time for supper. I don't know. We don't usually show pictures. Okay, show this time. Honey, your maple syrup on your cornbread. I don't like cornbread. I mumbled, poking my finger into the syrup pitcher when she wasn't looking. If you're going to do that, you better wash up first, she said. She had eyes in the back of her head. Bathrooms. Bathrooms through there. I pushed the doorway curtain aside and walked into what would have been a living room in anyone else's house. Books were scattered everywhere, on tables, on the chairs, even on the floors. Three of the walls were cluttered Look ahead. with sketches and stuffed fish chart fish sorry, let me read that sentence again. Three of the walls were cluttered with sketches, stuffed fish, and charts of the river. Several fishing poles hung from the fort with tackle box, a snorkel, and a mask on the floor beneath. It looked like a river rat's workroom, all right. Except that in the middle of everything was a half-finished carving of a bear. This question is a Been carving that for been carving that old fellow for years. Grandma called from the kitchen. The real one hangs out at the dump. Now come get your supper before I go feed it to him. Dad was right. Grandma found plenty for me to do. In the morning, I stacked firewood, then helped her clean out the rain gutters and change the spark plugs on her truck. The afternoon was almost over when she handed me a cane pole, a bobber, and some red worms. Fish fry tonight, she said, showing me how to bait the hook. That river's full of fat bluegills. Drop your line near the lily pads and you'll find them. Where was he supposed to find the fat bluegills? Oh, near the lily pads. Ding, ding. Down at the dock, I looked things over. The lily pads were too close to shore. There couldn't be fish there. I walked to the end of the dock and threw my line out as far as I could. 
Then I sat down to wait, and wait, and wait. My bobber never moved. There's no fish in this stupid river, I said out loud, disgusted. We had hamburgers for supper. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Wait, what did they eat for supper? Uh, hamburgers. Oh, okay. Give it another try, said Grandma the next evening. I bet you catch something. Don't count on it, I thought, as I headed back to the dock. I threw my line in the water, and I stretched out on the dock to wait. I must have fallen asleep because I was awakened by a loud chirping and chattering. I sat up and looked around. A flock of birds was moving toward me along the river, hovering over something floating on the water. It drifted, is that a Drifted, good call, Miss McClellan. It drifted downstream, closer and closer, until finally it bumped against the dock. Though it was covered with leaves and branches, now I could tell it was a raft. What was it doing floating down the river all by itself, I wondered. I reached down and pushed some of the leaves aside. Beneath them was a drawing of a rabbit. Beneath them was a drawing of a rabbit. Beneath them was a drawing of a rabbit. It looked like those ancient cave paintings I'd seen in books. Just outlines, but wild and fast and free. I cleaned away more leaves, and it was like finding presents under a Christmas tree. A bear, a fox, a raccoon, all with the wild look of the rabbit. Who had drawn them, I wondered? Where had this raft come from? Tis a mystery. I ran up to the cottage. Grandma was on the porch reading. Do you have some rope I can use? I asked. In the shed, hon, she said. Help yourself. She didn't ask me what I needed it for. I don't know what a keyframe rate is, but it says ours is too low, but hopefully you can still see us. In the shed, hon, she said for a second time. Help yourself. Again, she didn't ask me what I needed it for, and I decided not to tell her yet. I pushed the raft into the reeds along the river's edge, then tied it to the docks so it wouldn't drift away. All the while, birds flew over my head every now and then, swooping down to the raft as if it were a friend. A crane waded through the reeds to it. A turtle swam up from the bottom of the river. The moon had risen yellow over the river by the time I went up to the cottage to go to bed. I was already down at the dock the next morning when Grandma appeared with a life jacket and a long pole. She didn't seem surprised by the raft at all, or by the animal pictures all over it. How did you... I started. Let's go, Grandma interrupted, tossing me the life jacket and stepping onto the raft. She pushed the pole hard into the river bottom, and we moved smoothly into the current. Your turn, she said after... Oh, your turn, she said after a few minutes. She showed me how to hold the pole and push, and I pulled us through the middle of the river. Even there, the water wasn't over my head. We pulled up the raft, we pulled the raft up the river, and then let it slowly drift back down. The birds kept us company the whole time, soaring, swooping, singing. Even some landed on the raft and rode with us for a while. Hitchhikers, Grandma called them. Test question might be, what did they do to get this raft up the river? Did they? Pulled. Remember we talked about that word today in class? Not pulled like, oh, I pulled myself up, but pulled like I... Put that pole in the ground and... Drug myself across uh, the river as I drifted to the other side of the river. Oh, sorry, it's got a character. After that, I had little time for anything but the raft. I raced through whatever chores there were, then ran down, ran down to the dock wondering what animals I'd see that day. It wasn't just birds that the raft attracted. One morning... Three raccoons followed me along the shore. Another time, a turtle climbed on board and spent the morning sunning itself. And one afternoon, I saw a family of foxes slip through the trees along the river. Well, I thought you'd be pretty foxy, didn't you? When weather turned too hot and sticky to sleep indoors, Grandma helped me put a small tent on the raft. I lay on the top of the cool sheets and read comic books by flashlight until I fell asleep. One night, a noise woke me up. 
There in the moonlight stood a huge buck. He looked right at me, then lowered his head to drink, as if I wasn't there at all. I found Grandma the next morning working on her bear carving. Do you... Oh, it's a boy talk. Do you have some extra papers that I could draw on? I asked her. She brought out a big sketch pad and a pouch filled with thick pencils and crayons. I've been... Oh, I've been saving these just for you, she said. Better take these, too. She held out a snorkel and a mask. Never know when you might... This might come in handy on the raft. Now, this book doesn't say how old the grandma is, but you'd probably think she's like 107 by the way we're reading her voice. Well, we like old people voices and stories. The sun was hot that afternoon, so I pulled in the shade of a willow, then waited to see what animals the raft would bring. It wasn't long before a great blue heron whooshed down with a crayfish in its bill. I grabbed a pencil and began to sketch. I felt invisible as the bird calmly ate its lunch right in front of me. Then it preened its feathers, looked back up the river, and flew off. That night I showed my drawing to Grandma. Not bad, she said. Not bad at all. And she tacked it on the wall on top of the one on top of one of her own sketches. One day, I pulled up river farther than I'd ever been, near a clump of tall cattails. I startled an otter. Near a clump of tall cattails, I startled an otter family. They dove underwater, but as soon as with the other animals, oh my goodness, sorry guys, they dove underwater, but as soon with the other animals, the raft seemed to calm them down. Soon, they were playing all around me. Grandma had been right about the mask and snorkel coming in handy. I slipped them on, then hung my head over the raft and watched the otters play, catching fish, chasing each other, sometimes chasing their own tails. I kept very still, but they didn't seem to mind me watching. They played keep away with a small stone, then tug of war with a piece of rope. It was like they were showing off for me. They even let me feed them right out of my hand. What animal did the boy get to feed right out of his hand? A water weasel. An otter. An otter. That's the answer we're looking for. <laughs> Some mornings, Grandma would make a bag full of sandwiches and a thermos of icy lemonade. That's the fancy way to say lemonade. Then we'd put on our bathing suits, grab some towels, a lawn chair, and an inner tube, and pull upriver to her favorite swimming spot. I've come swimming here since I was a girl, she told me as we tied the raft to an old dock. The marshals used to live here, all ten of them. What a herd of wild animals we were. While Grandma watched from the inner tube, I practiced my flying cannonballs. Then we'd eat our lunch, and she'd tell me stories about growing up on the river. My favorite was at the time she'd found a small black pearl inside a river clam. I still have it, she said. Wait, what did she find? A small black pearl. And where did she find it? In a, in a clam? A river clam. <gasps> a river clam. Even fancier. What's peeking up out of the water? It's a water weasel. Oh, sorry. An otter. I confuse my animals. Somehow on the river, it seemed like summer would never end. But of course it did. On my last day, I got up extra early and crept down to the dock. The air was cool and, low pearl and a low pearly fog hung over the river. I untied the raft and quietly drifted downstream. Ahead of me, through the fog, I saw two deer moving across the river, a doe and her fawn. When they reached the shore, the doe leaped easily up the steep bank. Then it turned to wait for her baby, but the fawn was in trouble. It kept slipping down the muddy bank. The doe returned to the water to help, but the more the fawn struggled, the deeper it got stuck in the mud. Stuck in the mud, stuck in the mud. Hi, Mrs. Mosher. Hello. <laughs> I love water weasels. <gasps> Mrs. Mosher loves water weasels. Just a couple pages left, guys. I pushed off the river bottom and drove the raft hard onto the muddy bank, startling the doe. Then I dropped into the water. I was ankle deep in mud. You're okay, I whispered to the fawn, praying that the raft would calm it. I won't hurt you. Gradually, the fawn stopped struggling, as if it understood that I was there to help. I put my arms around it and pulled. It barely moved. 
I pulled again, then again. Slowly, the bond eased out of the mud, and finally it was free. Carefully, I carried the fawn up the bank to its mother. Hope he didn't fawn over that animal. <laughs> More humor. Then quietly I returned to the raft. From there I watched the, the doe nuzzle. Oh wait, that was last week's, last week's. I watched the doe nuzzle and clean her baby, and I knew what I had to do. I pulled the stub of crown from my pocket and drew the fawn. What did you draw? A fawn. In all its wilderness, onto the gray old boards of the raft. When I had finished, I knew it was just right. After supper, I showed Grandma my drawing of the fawn and told her my story. It's perfect, she said, but we need to do one more thing. She hurried up to the cottage. When she came back, she had tubes of oil paint and two brushes. Grandma helped me trace my drawing with the oil paint, which soaked up deep into the wood. That'll keep it, she said. Now you'll always be a part of the river. Just like you, Grandma, I told her. A river rat. Grandma laughed. Just like me, she agreed. So what? Did he and Grandma have in common at the end of the story? They were both just a couple of river rats. The other thing that is a little sad about our computer videos, if we do it on the computer, we can't see whoever joined us live, unfortunately. So thank you to all the families at home that joined us live, all the students that joined us live. Sorry we weren't able to give you a shout out in the middle of the video. But shout out to 3 McT. Truth. We appreciate you. And any family members watching, we have a third grade story test on Friday. This story will be on Google Classroom, Seesaw, the YouTubes, the interwebs, 10 o'clock news maybe. Fingers crossed I'm still waiting to go viral on, on, in the news station. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for waiting for me to get back from that cruise. You better get out of here, too, if you're going to catch the next one out of here. Oh, bye, guys.